camera or if you when you want to make a point. Okay, we're back. We're here down to the final stretch here. We are the Cube, SiliconAngle.tv's the Cube, where we go out to, out to the events and talk to the thought leaders, cover it. We're at the EMC VSpec launch. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle, and I'm with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Bharat Badranath, uh, who is in charge of cloud marketing at EMC. Bharat, welcome to the Cube. Uh, congratulations. This is really your event. Uh, you've been planning this for, you know, Quite some time. Yep, yep, no. <laughs> and, thank you. It's great uh, so, to how's be it here. feel? A great venue, really good turnout today. Yeah, thank how you. How are you feeling? Thank you. It's great to be here. A oh, little tired, but outside of that, it's great. The event was great. Good uh, attendance, good coverage. It's all been good. Yeah, overall. I mean, talk about the emphasis. I mean, it really is a, a lot of partners here. Yep. Um, you guys bent over backwards to really showcase them, give them some airtime uh, up on the stage. A number of them came in the cube. We really focused a lot today on the channel angle, didn't we, John? So talk about that whole piece of it. So one of the objectives of uh, vSpecs was to provide flexibility to partners, right? So, so uh, to partners, to customers, to give them choice. And a key ingredient there is bringing our ecosystem partners, both alliance partners as well as distribution partners, and including them in a way in the event as well as in the go-to-market in the future so we can take this product to market to solve some of the customer challenges the product, the, the solution is out to solve. And, and you know, as somebody who was designing the event, one of the ways to do it is have them an integral part of the event and bring them up on stage and give them some air time. So we get a, a mixing of, uh, get, get everybody's views out that we're all in this together to make it better for our customers. Talk about um, the announcement in terms of, you know, I just I was just showing you the piece that I wrote, and we quantified the market. You might have seen that, you know, earlier, um, and we we identified the re what we call the reference architecture as the biggest piece of the market. Yeah. Um, but you guys said this is more than a reference architecture. Um, you know, reference architecture. People think of white papers and best practices, and you know, communicating. And the problem with reference architecture is a lot of time the customer says, it's close, but it's not exactly me. How is this different from a reference architecture? Sure, so, so in two specific ways, right? It's, it's different than a reference architecture. The first and foremost is the way it's designed. It's designed to be truly modular so you can mix and match components, you can get the best of breed while not being forced into a specific architecture. You can pick and choose which elements you want that go into it. But what we did, which makes it somewhat different than, um, maybe it doesn't make it different than a reference architecture, but it adds or augments a reference architecture is we added complete go-to-market vehicles around it, right? So we worked with distribution partners may, uh, and the resellers to allow them to brand it. We're putting enablement, we're putting the right kind of incentives together to make it more attractive for uh, distribution to package it and deliver it to their customers. So, so there's two ways. One is the technology that went behind, which you heard from Prasad, on making sure that it's modular in nature so you can mix and match components to get the appropriate um, environment or the uh, optimal environment uh, for your company. That's number one. And the number two is go to market around it, enabling channel partners, giving them the right incentives to take it to market. We heard from the channel guys here today that they're all loving the product, yep. mainly because of the uh, simplicity of the packaging yep. and the ability to bring it to their customers. And essentially turnkey, I said push button, kind of sounds easier, I guess. Push a button, deploy yep. some cloud, kind of sounds, sounds simple, right? Yep. But the reality is that's what they want. They yep. want a complete turnkey and then wrapping services around it. So I got to say, you guys are really ahead of the curve because you know, I just came back from the SAP event and from this notion of keeping the infrastructure separate from the application environment with, to enable mobility and cloud is really just now hitting the scene for the big guys, right. SAP, including EMC. You guys are bringing essentially what it seems to be a core product to yeah. the channel. So has that been, have you heard that feedback? Have you heard like, wow, thanks for bringing some good product to the channel? No, absolutely. So this product or, or offering, if you will, um, has been designed with the channel in mind, right? So this is ongoing for the last Two, two and a half years, we ran a pilot back in Europe where we tried to bring these solution bundles together to see how the reception is. And, and as you know, channel partners today are 
offering solutions to their customers already. Some of them are building this, these kind of bundles and going to market. And when you see such pent up demand and the need from a customer saying, I don't want the complexity which goes into the infrastructure, take it all away from me, almost like giving me an abstraction layer. So uh, below that, it makes it easier for them to deploy and expand their infrastructure. Is it, is it just demand or is it in your mind or is that, that's driving or is it just the fact that the, the market's underserved? I mean, the channel has not had a, this kind of service from a product that's underserved. Uh, absolutely. So it, uh, is it the demand and underserved or I, both? I, I think it's a combination of both. It's a demand and lack of supply, both at the same time, right? Because it's not like, um, as you said earlier, there are reference architectures in the market, but nobody is providing them. There's one or the other component missing. We, for the first time, are bringing all the components that are required, not just the technology, not just the, the, the work that goes into it, but also putting all the other elements and, and making it easier for them to take it to their customer, which, which makes it interesting. Right? So the cloud brings this imperative to converge infrastructure. I think people generally accept that. Um, you talked about this abstraction layer, and you've also mentioned best of breed. My question to you is, um, we've seen in the industry there's always been this tension between best of breed or fully integrated suite. Uh, and it seems like the cloud is working, to, the pendulum is swinging toward that fully integrated suite. At the same time, product companies like uh, EMC, Cisco, NetApp, um, et cetera, all want to claim their best of breed. Um, and so, but by definition, everybody can't be best of breed. So, <laughs> does, is that more than a marketing term, best of breed? Does it really matter? If I have integration, doesn't that sort of trump best of breed? What's your take on that? Um, at the end of the day, it's the customer who decides, right, which what they want to move towards, whether it's fully integrated or best of breed, depending on the environment. I think when you look at EMC, whether you look at the integration aspect or whether you look at the best of breed aspect, uh, as Jeremy pointed out earlier today, you know, we, we have the leading market share, and not only do we have the leading market share, we're also growing that leading market share faster than anybody else. So. Um, I, I think that is testament to the products. It's testament to the value EMC brings in customers' environments. So we, I, I think we have the numbers to back up what we would traditionally call best of breed or typically call best of breed. Um, yes, it's become a marketing term because everybody wants to claim it's got best in it, so everybody wants it. But when you look at a uh, fully integrated system, VC is doing phenomenally well. It's growing at $800 million uh, run rate. It's at an $800 million run rate exiting. Um, we'll have the numbers for this quarter as we get in later. But you will see that um, for a two-year-old company, a two-year-old endeavor, very few companies can claim they're close to a billion dollars in run rate, right? So I think EMC is winning on well, both the sides. Well, you know, Instagram sold for a billion dollars. I, I know. <laughs> they don't, they didn't, weren't actually doing any revenue. <laughs> no run rate. <laughs> but, but, you know. Well, that's no. a business model. That, that's <laughs> I think you can get 15x multiple, yeah. that's a nice, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a real business you got there. Oh, yeah. An infinite multiple there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. I, I, Two-year-old I, I company, know. billion dollars, is just like, it's just like. Yeah, this is, this is there's no logic there, but yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there is because they paid real money for it. But uh, uh, when, when you look at it, I think, uh, going back to Jeremy's point, it's, it's all about giving customers choice, right? We let the customer choose whether integrated is the way they want to go, because some customer environments are suited for integrated and some are not. And for them, they need to still have choice. They need to still be able to pick and choose best of breed while still getting some of the simplicity benefits that you would get from a you know, fully conversion. So I like the way that <clears throat> Jeremy set up the spectrum this morning. You had yeah. you know integrated and simple, and he had you know choice on the other end of the spectrum. And he said, <clears throat> we asked ourselves, is there room for something in between? And he used the iPad analogy, which I thought was very powerful. Um, I want to talk about specifically pricing and lock-in. So, and you and I have talked about this. There's a perception that the the fully integrated, you know, single skew V block like system is going to be a premium, mm -hmm. and I've always argued it should be. Um, and then the roll your own from a capex standpoint, by mm -hmm. the way, for the roll your own in theory should be less expensive if you want to do all the integration yourself. What seems to be happening in the marketplace though is that there's a land grab going on, and the vendors are being very aggressive on pricing. I presume V specs you're going to be aggressive, and there seems right now not to be a, a premium. There's white glove service going on. You, you saw the the channel emphasis today. Um, over time, shouldn't users expect to pay more for integration? 
I, I agree with you. I think over time that is because if you're truly adding value on the integrated aspect, if you're truly adding value on the converged segment, then somebody has got to pay for that value, right? So, so it's absolutely understandable why um, customers would expect to pay more at the far end of the spectrum. But having said that, you, you hit it on the head. There is a land grab going on with cloud, more and more customers thinking about deploying cloud, moving uh, virtualization is adding some complexity which customers are not used to. Um, it's now becoming a true land grab of who gets there the first and, and how much of a space can, how much of space in the data center can they occupy, which is leading to discounting, which is leading to some of the points you had mentioned. But I think from the EMC front, as you've seen, we, we are able to push the value to our customers and still be able to get the right kind of um, growth without having to sacrifice some of the, some of the value or, or what, what our competition seems to be doing. Yeah, and, and I think that um, you know, as this thing proceeds, I mean, you talk to customers and they say, well, I'm afraid of the single SKU because I don't want to get locked in and I don't want to give pricing power. That's really their big concern. At the same time, you see people gobbling up. You said $800 million run rate, so somebody's buying the stuff. Um, now, from the standpoint of vSpecs, that's moderated somewhat because you can choose anybody's server, you can choose whatever hypervisor you, know, you want, et cetera. Um, so, to a degree, the pricing power for VSpec shifts to the buyer. Right? Mm -hmm. They can make mm -hmm. some, some options. And so, and that's why we feel like, and I've you know, shown you the numbers, that that, that reference architecture piece is, is so much more substantial of a, of a, of a market opportunity. Um, so, as we go forward, do you agree that the vast majority of, of, of infrastructure deployments are going to be cloud-like? Yeah. Uh, and they're going to be some degree of integration, whether it's fully integrated or, you know, reference architecture or you know solutions as you guys have. Shown. Absolutely, I, I think it's just going to be varying degrees of integration, as you put it, right? Which is, um, if you are deploying an infrastructure, you want it to be scalable, you want it to meet your demands of the cloud environment. You're going to see more and more um, integration being built in. We've already done quite a bit of integration even within the best of breed space. When you look at um, VMware and Microsoft, we're tightly integrated with the hypervisors. We have application level integration, which is already going on, so customers can get it today. What we're doing with vSpecs is getting some of the benefits of, of standardization, if you will, into a, a way that can be easily consumed by customers and easily delivered by partners. So, so you will see us um, roll out specific versions and try to bring more of that standardization with each of the partners you saw on stage because if you're a Microsoft shop or if you're a VMware shop, you want to make sure that the infrastructure that you procure is optimal for that environment. So you will see f flavors of vSpecs, if you will. Um, all we, today we announced 14 configurations. You will see that expand over, over the next few months to, to include more and more and, and create some custom uh, configurations with our other platform partners as well. So one of the things we like to do in theCUBE is we like to have conversations that your customers are having. Sure. Um, and your customers are talking about the different choices that they have. And we, we like to get our guests on and have knowledge about the market landscape and, mm -hmm. and talk to them about that. Now, of course, we're here. There's all this EMC branding around us. You guys have sponsored us to be here. Thank you, by the way, for, for having us here. But at the same time, we're an independent organization. So we want to lay out the landscape. So you've got the defenders that have the big install base. It's a $400 billion TAM by 2017, and it comprises all the storage, all the servers, all the networking, all the infrastructure management, and, and of course, the services. Now, so you get the defenders, of course, IBM and HP have the big bases to defend. You guys come in with VMware, and you don't really have a server play other than VMware, so that's all greenfield for you. So you're attacking. Cisco's attacking with, with UCS, so it's a really interesting dynamic. You saw IBM yesterday announce, you know, from its strong suit, which is servers, you know, some really impressive capabilities. You see NetApp making moves. What's the landscape look like and why is EMC, you know, different? Why should people buy from EMC? Sure. So, um, when, when you look at Defenders, we've got a pretty large install base on the, on the storage side oh, right, within, within the enterprise. So, so when really? you look at Indeed, the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, we are leading the market when it comes to the storage side. Um, we've got a whole portfolio of products all the way um, from our security products from RSA, of course, our storage portfolio, VMAX, VNX, and uh, uh, our backup and recovery division data domain. So, so we've got a whole slew of offerings within our portfolio which we bring to bear. 
But I think the more important thing here is we are also working with the best of breed partners, as you saw up on stage. We're, we're creating an ecosystem of partners so we can go to market to meet customers' choice requirements, right? So, so we're not only bringing VMware, we're also bringing Microsoft, we're bringing uh, Citrix uh, on the hypervisor as well as on the, on the desktop, virtual desktop space. You will see in future we're working with application level providers to get some of their apps on a, on a vSpec bundle. Because at the end, it's all about making it simple, efficient, and flexible for the customer, giving them the choice of procuring. Now, what we are doing to get there is bringing, the, uh, bringing to fruition our uh, years of development experience as well as engineering work, which um, you heard earlier about EMC proven, bringing all of that together. We believe that is what is going to win, where customers have the optimal flexibility, choice of picking and choosing what is right for their environment, customers and partners picking and choosing what's right for their environment, while at the same time getting the benefits of what the um, converged infrastructure is promising and vBlock is delivering today while, while at the same time getting the choice. So we believe EMC is in the best possible position among the other competitors in the industry to win this. Well, I mean, no doubt you've got some assets and I, you know, a lot of this too is intangible, yep. as you know. Yep. Uh, I mean, you've got momentum. Yep. You know, it's like when you're watching a football game and all of a sudden you just feel the momentum turn. Yep. You do have the momentum behind you and, and a lot of that, well, of course. Well, you guys did your homework. I, mean, I think what I'm impressed with was um, you guys did your homework um, and then Jeremy pointed out, you, you know, listen to the channel. I mean, if you listen to the channel, you pretty much can't get it wrong yep. because they pretty, they're vocal because they're driven by margin, they're driven by profitability. So they're not afraid to share from my experience yep. what the hell's wrong, what, need, what vendors need to do. So people who don't listen to the ones who get, who get crushed. So good call on that, I, I see, see that. But also to me, I think you guys have brought something to the channel that really hits the target demand right now in that it's really early with a viable solution to bring into the marketplace that's this good because we heard, you know, mystery yeah, is margin. You know, solve the mystery, you get margin. And there's a lot of mysteries, a lot of demand for cloud. So again, I was pointing to the SAP thing there. Huge, huge uptake with HANA right now that they're seeing the most highly accelerated success deployments ever mm -hmm. in the history of SAP with HANA because of mobile, because of cloud. So I think you got that right. Now the question is, can, can they accept this product? Can they integrate it into the channel? Yep. Um, you guys are new to the channel, right? So that's going to be, since VNX really, in my mind, um, kind of having that channel presence. So, you know, if you guys can click on that front, on the tactical side, getting it integrated into their normal tools base and, 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 and joint deals, et cetera, I think you're going to be very successful with it. So, yeah, and, and that's, where, that's where we're working hard to make sure that that happens. Yeah. The execution happens, meeting in the channel with our ecosystem partners, making sure that we have incentives aligned, programs aligned to make it happen. Right? You guys are enabling too a whole other set of, you know, it's the classic pyramid, the top of the pyramid is the elite, you know, elite people, and then as the mid-range opens up, you open up a mid-range, fat middle of an opportunity for someone to be specialized enough to broker and piece together solutions, not just engineer them, right? So yeah. that's always been what we've seen as a sticking point in this business right now is that you need some engineering chops. Yeah. If you were going to take this from scratch, and we're kind of seeing it in the big data space, as you know, you guys know about EMC, is that you, know, you don't need a, you need a PhD to do certain things, but whoever can make that simple for an average tech person right. and a manager, you're good. So. Yeah, and, and you hit it right on the head. It's if you listen to the channel, if you listen to the customer, you can't go wrong. And that's what we did. We went to the channel, we said, what is it that you want? They said, we want flexibility. Don't just give me a single SKU which I have to sell because then my value add reduces. Now they have a uniqueness of adding value. And at the same time, I think, you know, the putting the logo on that was sheer genius because um, now they can call it their own and brand it their own as opposed to being just a, a reseller. Yeah, and I think that um, as John pointed out, listening to the channel, you can't go wrong. And I think in some respects, I mean, for all the success that VBlock has had, um, there was some tension in the channel. Mm -hmm. We don't want that, we want choice. We're gonna go do our own. And we, we and I have talked about this, and um, you know, your premise is that those guys out there doing, doing it on their own are gonna you know, glom on this, on yep. V-Specs, because you've got the lab behind it, you've got the capabilities, you've got the branding, kind of a no-brainer for them. Now, maybe there's some not invented here that are going to hang on to their, their own, and that's fine. They may have some unique capability, but I would think the vast majority of the channel is going to leverage your 
engineering expertise and then go to market with you. Yep. Uh, absolutely, even those who are grappling with the not invented here, once you start looking at the economics of the cost savings of not having to invent it again when somebody else is doing the work for you, it becomes a lot more logical for them to pick this up and then ha add higher value add services on top of it. Right? And there's still, there's, and there still might be some white space, there may be some management capability sure. or some unique thing for an industry that you know, is gonna require some of their own integration. It's good for them. You know, the Absolutely. Get, yeah, find yeah. their niche, you know, if, you, if you're a small yeah. player, you gotta have a niche. So. So, so one of the key things in the design of the V-Specs was we need to go far enough so it's relevant for the customer, relevant for the channel, but you can't go too far because then you disintermediate the value yeah. the channel provides and that, that's not what we want to do. We want to make it easier for them to sell it we want to make it easier for customers to buy the right infrastructure of them but and provide the right tools so channel still adds tremendous value uh, as they go through it. So you're rel my, I have a personal question. You're relatively new to EMC. Um, talk about the culture a little bit. Um, you know, you've worked at other, other companies out here and, and others, and how do you compare it? I, I've been here for slightly over a year. It's been a, it's been a great company to work for. Um, it's been a great company to work with uh, people I will say it's, it almost feels like the culture is in transition, which is, uh, it's, it's ongoing change in terms of, as you know, I work out of the West Coast, so on planes most of the time, probably not as, as often as you are, but you know, but uh, we, we do get up to back to you the home You some base. West Coast mojo going on, you got Jeremy <laughs> out here, you know, aggressive branding. Yeah, yeah, um, so, so infusing some of the West Coast into the EMC uh, culture, if you will. But still, majority of the people are based in Hopkinton, I think, very bullish on where EMC would go. Um, looking People at in Hopkinton, and just because they're in Hopkinton, it makes them a little bit different, but EMC's known to be aggressive. <laughs> very aggressive. I mean, it's not and, like and you see some of the market share, or market yeah. gaining momentum, which we are having right yeah. now. It's, it's, it's amazing. I think that East Coast, West Coast mojo, John, you, you, hey, we got some East Coast, West yeah, Coast I mojo going I love on too. It. <laughs> I think it's the right formula. Yeah, it's a good balance, man. I, I don't see one trying to force the other. It's just a great balance. It's a, I think it's really, from a you know, business culture standpoint, case study, it's, it's really a, a testament of our times, Dave, that companies like EMC and our companies can work together because it's a global economy now, yeah, it's a global it business. It's not about, oh, East Coast, this coast, and, and you gotta kinda make it all work, so. Right. Um, great, well, hey, thanks for, we're gonna wrap up here, thanks for, for that uh, chat. Uh, Dave, we're gonna wrap up on our next segment, we'll be right back with our show wrap up with Stu Miniman, Dave Vellante, and myself to wrap on this EMC VSpec launch. Thank you. Every journey has a first step. A transformation from where we are to where we wish to be. When there is no path, we rely on technology that is proven. We trust. And we can attain our goals.